<laughs> Alas, poor devil. I knew him well. Tasmanian devil's what I mean, and today they're on the edge of suffering what natural selection does best. The poor little bloke is on the edge of dying out. Today's devils live only on the island of Tasmania, but their bones are found widespread throughout the mainland of Australia. Oh, and their fossils tell us some of them used to be huge. But more of that later. I'm John Mackay. Join me as we travel the globe looking at Darwin's evolution a very unnatural selection. Oh, and also we'll interview some well-published scientists who firmly believe the world was created and the evidence proves it. Pretty, eh? I mean the flowers. Now, I love orchids, and so did Charles Darwin. In fact, he even wrote a book about them. This one. Let me tell you what he originally called it. On the various contrivances by which British and foreign orchids are fertilised by insects, and on the good effects of intercrossing by Charles Darwin, MA, FRS, etc., with illustration. Now, after such a mouthful, you don't need to read the rest of the book to find out what it's about. Darwin was fascinated by how these beautiful flowers are pollinated by insects. In fact, the professor who wrote the introduction to this new edition said this, the pollination mechanisms Darwin described are still today as marvellous as they were when Darwin first described them. What's he talking about? Well, look, I've got my little catacetum orchid here. It's winter down under here in Australia in my greenhouse. He's lost his flowers and he's just about to lose his leaves. Now, when Darwin told his friend and supporter Huxley about how this plant is pollinated, Huxley replied, do you really think I can believe all that? Now, what was it that Huxley couldn't believe? Well, this little flower actually shoots bees with two bags of pollen, hits them in the middle of the back, never misses, gets them every time. You tried that lately? Or oh, when the glue on the pollen dries before the bee falls backwards out of the flower so it never falls off. Now Darwin would spend the rest of his days trying to figure out how natural selection plus millions of years could produce such brilliant engineering design. Now he never succeeded and here's some of the reasons why. Nothing in the living world works in isolation. Everywhere we look, we see living things working together in functioning systems. Now, take an example that everyone knows about, flowers and insects. Flowers have fragrant petals. They attract insects with their color. They provide nectar for the insects to drink. And the insects come and collect the pollen, take it away to another flower. That is a good functioning system. Now, Think of an example like water lilies. They're one of my favorite flowers. According to evolutionary theory, water lilies used to be seaweed that moved onto land and didn't like it, so they moved back into the water. Now, during that time, they acquired all of the features needed to attract insects. They have color, they have fragrance, they provide nectar, and their pollen is just in the right place for the insects to collect it when they crawl around the flower. Good flowers! Water lilies have an extra special gift for insects. They heat their flowers. We took some measurements around the lily pond on a balmy autumn day in Queensland. The air temperature was 24.3 degrees Celsius. That's about 75 Fahrenheit. The water was a bit cooler, 20.4 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. But the temperature in the flowers was 32.6. That's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 12 degrees higher than the water. The heat isn't for the flowers, it's for the insects. As they fly over water, insects lose heat and if they get too cold, they can't fly. But if they land on a flower with central heating, they not only get a feed of nectar, they keep warm. So they have plenty of energy to fly to another flower, which is what they have to do to get the pollination job done. Now, there's no point in the flower having the right color having fragrance, producing nectar and heat, unless there are already insects that are programmed to recognize that, come to the flowers and collect